This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I hope you all are having a wonderful Mother's Day, and I, I hope that our, our time together can, can help us to, to discern ways that we can face the unexpected. And perhaps there have been mothers or grandmothers or others who have been nurturing in your life who have helped you to face the unexpected in life. Today, we're going to first start with a passage of scripture from Acts, the 16th chapter, verses 25 through 34. And in this story, we find Paul and Silas. They're in Philippi, and, and they have come upon an experience that was totally unexpected after having a, a marvelous experience with Lydia in Philippi and some other women and, and others there who, who, did, who felt the calling to, to convert their lives to Christ and to believe in God. Now they found themselves in prison. And it was a, a very difficult time for them. So here we find them in prison. And we wonder how they how they coped during this time. Well, here's the story. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bonds were unfastened. When the jailer woke and saw that the prison doors were open, he drew his sword and, and was about to kill himself, supposing that the prisoners had all escaped. But Paul cried out with a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. And the jailer called for lights and rushed in, and trembling with fear, he fell down before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, and you and your household. And they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed the wounds, and he was baptized at, at once, he and his family. Then he brought them up to his house and, and set food before them. And he rejoiced along with his entire household that he had believed in God. Our next passage comes from 2 Timothy. And in 2 Timothy, we're going to look at the first chapter, verses 3 through 8. And in this passage, what happens a little bit beforehand is I, I want us to to all know that, that this was the last letter that Paul wrote to Timothy. And he was in prison at this time. And, and Timothy was a young man who had been mentored by, by Paul. And you could say that, that Timothy was a spiritual son, not necessarily a biological son, but in all, uh, all the sense of the word, uh, Paul felt like he was a son to him. So he writes this letter. I thank God whom I serve as did my ancestors with a clear conscience. As I remember you constantly in my prayers, night and day. As I remember your tears, I long to see you that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. And now I am sure dwells in you as well. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. But God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord. God bless the reading and hearing of his holy word. Let us pray. Oh God, I ask that you be with us this, this beautiful day and, 
and inspire our hearts and our minds. And we thank you, O oh God, for those women who have blessed our lives with their insights, their wisdom, their love, their undergirding. We pray that you will bless them in a very special way today. And for those who have gone on to glory, may we feel their nearness to us today with their love. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'd like for us to, to think about uh, what are those things that our mothers, our grandmothers, our, our special relationships where we have felt nurtured in our lives, what are some of the things that they have taught us, that they have shared with us, that help us in our lives? I believe that, that Mother's Day is a time that we can affirm those special relationships that despite our, our disappointments or failings that, that could have affected those relationships, their love and their continuous encouragement has, has helped us in our lives. And it's good to be thankful for them today. So as we consider some of those things that we will always remember that were said to us by these dear, dear women, these dear nurturers in our lives, what are some of these things that, that help us today? Well, I remember uh, my mother uh, has always told us to, to be careful uh, as we leave the house and, and go on back to our our, our own homes or wherever we're, we're going to, to be careful. And, and also in, in case the, the weather was bad, it was cold or, or just a, a, a horrific kind of weather report we weren't real sure about, to, we, we would be encouraged to, to take a blanket or just make sure we, we had what we needed in case we had car trouble. And I, I always felt with, with my mother that it was important to, to always be prepared for the unexpected. And today we find that, that Paul and Silas were, were needing to be prepared for the unexpected and it's, it's glorious to, to read where they, they read and uh, they, they, they sang and they prayed at midnight. And that gave them hope in that very difficult time and actually helped others there in the prison too to, to come to know the Lord. It's interesting to find that Paul does not mention his mother in any of his writings. And, and yet we, we hear in this passage from 2 Timothy where he referred to his ancestors, um, that there was faith there. And so can't help but wonder if they could have been his mother or his grandmother or someone else, uh, another woman in his life that nurtured him along the way. Here's his, his words. I remember your genuine faith, as he speaks to Timothy, for you shared the faith that first filled your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. And I know that same faith continues strong in you. Yes, Paul and, and Silas faced some very unexpected circumstances and, and difficult, and yet they were prepared, it seemed, for that, for that terrible time. And while they were facing uh, this difficult time, their faith did make a difference that night. I wonder if their prayers uh, could have been like Jesus when he was in Gethsemane. I wonder if their prayers could have started with cries for release from their suffering and not wanting to, to go through the suffering that seemed inevitable just as Jesus was in Gethsemane and, he, and he, he prayed and cried deep tears for this cup to be passed from him. And, and yet he got to that place of surrender and trusting God with his life and saying, thy will be done. Perhaps Paul and Silas came to that same place of surrender and freedom in their spirit to trust God with what would happen, to trust God with, with whatever outcomes would happen ahead 
in the future. Perhaps they had a, re a remembrance of, of their mother or grandmother saying, remember to pray, remember to pray. And that got them through. That turned their difficult situation into one of, of, of hope, of a sense of security and peace that comes, a sense of assurance that comes with prayer that perhaps started with a mother's prayer, a grandmother's prayer for them earlier in life. Barbara Brown Taylor is a writer who I, I met recently. Well, it's been a few years ago when I went to a conference and uh, she wrote a book called An Altar in the World. And she, she had her own struggles with things not happening as she had expected. And yet later in the book and all, we see how she felt God was with her in all of that. So perhaps as I read this, you can think of things that, that perhaps you thought would happen this way and then it turned out this way. These are her words. I have set out to be married and ended up alone. I have set out to be healthy and ended up sick. I have set out to live in New England and ended up in Georgia. When I was 30, I, I set out to be a parish priest. Almost 13 laters, I teach school. Now, these things are not uh, negative or positive. I mean, there's no, when things don't turn out the way we expect, it doesn't always mean that it's, it's, it's a bad thing. It, it can be a glorious thing. It can be a wonderful thing. So sometimes we have to let go of, of trying to, to manage our lives in such a way to, to happen a certain way because God may have other ideas for us when we're open to his leading. Life happens and we learn to adapt and to overcome. That's something else my mother has taught me through the years is uh, to, to learn to come to a place of acceptance in life as things happen. And, and when we get to that place of accepting things as they are and letting go and giving things to God, then, then we can learn to adapt and to overcome with God uh, being with us and acknowledging God is with us. Another nurturing influence in my life has been a writer, Charles Swindoll. And uh, during my earlier years of high school and college, I began reading his books and there was a prayer that really, really um, has stayed with me that he wrote based on some scriptures. It goes like this, Oh God, my times are in thy hands each moment each hour is yours. Whatever happens, I trust you completely. When we can say that kind of prayer, we, we are saying that out of a place of acceptance. And during these difficult days today that we're facing, if we can come to a place of acceptance that this is the way things are right now, and try to let go of worries or, or speculating what's going to happen, but just to try to be in a place of acceptance. And just know God's got this. God sees the big picture. God knows. God knows so much that uh, I don't have to, to worry about trying to figure it all out. But if we can just trust God more, uh, that, will, that will be good for us. Some of the things our, our mothers or those who have been nurturing for us have told us resonate a lot with the Bible, don't they? The, the Bible's teachings, and it's amazing how they, how they go together. And my, my hope this day is that these special relationships uh, that we have in our lives, that those who have nurtured us along the way, that, that we can remember how they have pointed us to the love of God to the love of God who never gives up on us, who, who never changes. 
And as we close today, I want to share a verse of scripture that inspires us to, to live into God's holy attributes for relationships. So as we learn and, and are open to being nurturing for others, to be grateful for those who have been nurturing for us, but to let that flow outwardly to others. These words from Galatians 5, <clears throat> verses 20 through, 22 through 26, really capture it all. This is God's standard for how we relate to one another. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things, and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh and its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, competing against one another, envying one another. Remember, facing the unexpected begins with prayer. And I believe that there have been others in our lives when we were born, when we were children and growing up, who have prayed for us. So as we face the unexpected, let us remember that there has been a mother's prayer for us. There has been a grandmother's prayer. Others who have prayed us up for life and continue to pray for us. May we also be nurturing for others. Amen.